present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week in Guildford in the fine county of Surrey. Guildford was for two centuries the capital of the West Saxon Kingdom and was the scene for the coronation in 978 of Ethelred the Unready, who was crowned wearing a shower cap dripping under a bath towel. <laughs> Victorian Guildford became an industrial town and was the original manufacturing base for Chubb Locks, which did so much to cut down the fish thefts in the area. <laughs> According to the town's official history, the writer P.G. Woodhouse was born in Guildford in 1881, quote, while his mother was here. <laughs> what a sad loss to medical science the writer of that gem must have been. A famous company operating here for many years was Dennis Brothers, who built double-decker buses. Both brothers died in 1939, within days of each other. Isn't that always the way with bus manufacturers? <laughs> In the 1970s, Guildford University was in the vanguard of what we now call political correctness. Disparaging comments about race and gender were outlawed, as were jokes about old age. But they're not alone here in finding nothing to laugh at in elderly people. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. <laughs> on my left, Barry Clark and Graham Darden. And on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Jeremy Hardy. And taking her place at the desk next to me to enjoy an evening of scoring, please welcome the ever-delightful Samantha. OK, well, we're going to start this week with a roundabout, a roundabout, a roundabout the time my stammer came back. <laughs> the speech impediments aren't a subject for comedy. Jokes about stammering are a big, big no-no. Instead, the teams are going to play the game called Down the Pan Alley, where they suggest titles of songs which would have been guaranteed flops. So, uh, Barry, you could start. How do you solve a problem like diarrhoea? <laughs> Tim? There's a flop in Germany. Give Greece a chance. <laughs> Jeremy? You were always on my to-do list. <laughs> Graham? I am the walnut. <laughs> Portaloo sunset. <laughs> Everything I do, I do it for money. Hey, Jew. <laughs> oh, Sexual ealing. I know him. Oh, well. I bet you look good on the pub floor. <laughs> By the rivers of Babacombe. Killing me softly with his thong. <laughs> Didn't we have a lovely time the day we went to Croydon? <laughs> Bob the Builder with tss, little costume. <laughs> Mild thing. Ever, <laughs> ever fallen in love with someone with whom you should not have fallen in love? <laughs> I let a fart in San Francisco. <laughs> I want to hold your gland. <laughs> Bat out of hull. <laughs> Horse with no mane. <laughs> well, the teams are going to sing for us now in the round oh. called One Song to the Tune of Another. <laughs> Piano accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell. Listeners will be interested to learn that Colin is also a prolific classical composer and recently performed his 22nd symphony. Everyone agreed 20 seconds was quite long enough. <laughs> OK, so we'll start with you, Barry. I'd like you to sing the words of Sex on Fire by the Kings of Leon, 
to the tune of the Dam Busters March. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, Barry. That was good. And thank you for clapping along. That uh, really started to feel like a night out in Guildford, didn't it? <laughs> so, so, you now, Tim, I'd like you to sing the words of Barbie Girl by Aqua to the tune of Strangers in the Night. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl In the Barbie world Life in plastic, it's fantastic You can brush my hair Undress me everywhere In imagination Life's your creation Come on, Barbie, let's go party I'm a Barbie girl In the Barbie boy world single girl in the fantasy world dress me up take your time I'm your dolly you're my doll rock and roll feel the glamour and piss me watch touch me the hanky panky you can touch you can play, you can say I'm all with your all. I'm a Barbie. Okay. It's uh, your turn now, Graham. And uh, can you sing the words of You'll Never Walk Alone to the tune of Oh, I Do Like to Be Beside the Seaside? <laughs> storm hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark at the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark walk on though the wind walk on through the rain though your dreams be tossed and a balloon walk on walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone thank you It was one clap to the rhythm of another. <laughs> well, finally, it's Jeremy's turn. Uh, Jeremy, I'd like you to sing the words of My Humps by the Black Eyed Peas <laughs> to, the, to the tune of I Vow to Thee, My Country. <laughs> what you can do with all that junk all that junk inside your trunk i'm a get 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 you drunk get you love drunk off my humps 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 my lovely little lady lumps check it out what are you gonna do with all that ass, all that ass inside them jeans? I'm a make, 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 make you scream, make you scream, make you scream. The next game is about new neighbours moving in. Uh, Tim was telling us he recently woke up to find a Romany traveller and family had set up camp in the field next to his house. If I'd realised we'd be living next door to a serial unemployed layabout living off state handouts, we'd never have come here, said the Romany traveller. 
<laughs> OK, one team will play removal men delivering to the house next door, while the other team will be nosy neighbours observing and trying to guess who the new homeowners might be. So you can go first, Tim and Jeremy, and you're to be the removal men. And the identity of Tim and Jeremy's new homeowner will now be displayed to the theatre audience via the laser display board <laughs> and the mystery voice for the listeners at home. Oh. Silvio Berlusconi. Silvio Berlusconi. OK, Tim and Jeremy, would you start moving in the new owner's possessions now? Cool. Blimey, give us a hand with this. Hey, where's the tongue? What is it? It's hair dye. Oh. <laughs> it's got a load of skincare products here as well. Yeah, Ron Seal and Cuprinol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks like uh, he's having some parties. What's that thing? That's a remote. What, to control the telly? And the newspapers. <laughs> What's in that filing cabinet? So there are tax returns that haven't been filled in. And birth certificates that haven't been filled in. <laughs> Look, uh, he's left his jacket here. What's that in his pocket? Oh, the chief of police. Oh. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Our curtains were twitching there. Yes. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Pull yourself together, yes. Italian? Yes. yes. Hair dye? Yes. Yep. Tan. Tan. Police in his pocket? Yes. Tan. Are we getting a round of applause for repeating what they said? <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's, it's Sophia Loren. We got it. <laughs> Silvio Berlusconi. Yes. <laughs> right, well, it's your turn to be removal men now, Barry and Graham. The identity of Barry and Graham's new homeowner will now be displayed to the theatre audience via the laser display board, while here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Edwina Curry. Edwina Curry. Right, um, we're moving in this lady. Uh, what have you got there? Ball gowns. Well, it's a whole rack of them, isn't no. it? Ball gowns, yeah. Not worn, apparently. Most of them haven't been worn at all. Most of them, no, that's quite right. They're Stylish, still, though, They've in still a way. got the labels on. Style at pound stretchers. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? A small know. red tent. A pair of red knickers, that's what that is. Oh, right. It? You were misled by the reinforced gusset, yes, I expect. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And here's another pair of knickers. They're uh, pale grey, for some no, reason. No, no, I'll, your... <laughs> I'll take your final wife front. Wife so front? Oh, right. There's a message on the front. A message? What does that say? Wish you were here. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, look, a record album. Oh, that's nice. What is it? Sammy Davis and Ella Fitzgerald. Oh. Called Salmonella. <laughs> Up all night. Yeah. <laughs> And, oh, look at this. No, look, look, she's got a self-help DVD. It's called How to Be Charming and Sexy. <laughs> Still in it, its cellophane. Yes. <laughs> and that's all stuff in. It's Oswald Mosley. <laughs> <laughs> it's Edwina Curry. It is. Yeah. 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 Well, the next game is called Word for Word. It's where each team takes it in turn to exchange a series of unrelated words while the opposing team tries to spot a connection between any of these words. So, for example, if the word witch was followed by the word hazel, that would be disallowed, as witch hazel is a consumer magazine for squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> or, indeed, if uh, lunch was followed immediately by dinner, you'd know we've got Eamon Holmes on the show. <laughs> So off you go, Tim and Jeremy. Mastic. Boyhood. Mattress. Blamange. Elevation. Uh, yes, uh, Graham has... I mean, if, if you're practising your trampolining, you get enormous elevation from a blamange mattress. <laughs> That's a fairly accurate observation. Right. Well done, Graham. Yeah. Thank you. So you, you can take over now, Graham. Sure? Yes, I'm sure. No, that was my word. <laughs> <laughs> So, belligerent, nevertheless, diatribe, because, funicular, then, <laughs> uh, Tim. He hesitation. <laughs> uh, now you can carry on, Bang Graham. You're right. Kangaroo, hop. 
Yes, Jeremy. A kangaroo might like to go to a dance, which in America is sometimes called a hop. <laughs> A hop thing. Yes, yeah. I think that's. Um, I, I'll give you that, Jeremy. I that's very good. That. Yeah. Crumpet. Plinth. Owl. Death. Thong. Chocolate. Beret. Platitude. Cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> Death. Uh, Graham. Um, there is nothing more platitudinous than a duck billed platitude. <laughs> yes, there is a, a hop. connection there. I think mm. uh, rather silly of you not to notice it, I, I thought. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Graham and Barry, and please be assured this won't go on for very much longer. Uh, Jack? Yes? That was my word. Oh. <laughs> Every time. Listen. Ear. Nose. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide. All right. what this does. Oh! oh yeah. <laughs> it ends the game. Well, the next game is called Hold Your Breath, and if it's top-line entertainment you're after, then don't. <laughs> so, at the count of three, the teams will take a deep breath to see who can hold it the longest. <laughs> so, one, two, three, breathe in. <gasps> uh... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, that's me. <laughs> Barry? <laughs> Barry? <laughs> and Barry's the winner. Well, the next game is called Spot the Sig. The name was adapted from a different game called Spot the Stig, which they play on Top Gear each week. Jeremy Clarkson teases his audience about who their mystery test driver might be, while the viewers scratch their heads trying to decide whether it's a monkey's or a toss they couldn't give. <laughs> By the way... <laughs> By the way, for anyone who's never seen Top Gear, we should explain, well done. <laughs> In Spot the Sig, the team's challenge is to identify the name of a programme simply by hearing its signature tune, OK? So, here's the first one. I know that one. Yes. That's Traffic Island Discs. <laughs> OK, well, hold well on. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Let's have another one. I know that. That's Curry Nation Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah. How about this one, then? The Muse Quiz. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, that well-known show that you used to be on. <laughs> well, here's another one. Ow! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ow! Ow! Right, that sounds like hemorrhoids. <laughs> It is, yes. Quite right. What about this one then? <laughs> is that nuclear test match special? <laughs> it is quite, quite right, it is, Tim, yeah. Uh, anyone guess this one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen to this then. Ah, oh, there you are. 
bang on time. Oh, that's Tales of the Expected. <laughs> well, there it is. And uh, finally... <laughs> Trinidad's army. <laughs> there you go, well, the teams are going to work in pairs now, like old married couples. It's often said that when a couple have been together a long time, one will finish the other's sentence. Like Rosemary West, for example. <laughs> The team is going to write letters to each other now. Most writing these days is done electronically, but as a young scriptwriter, Tim recalls banging away at a typewriter, stopping every few hours to change ribbons. Of course, he had a lot more hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> Barry and Graham, I'd like you to start by composing a letter from King Harold to William the Conqueror, and then Tim and Jeremy will come up with a reply and so on. However, the challenge is that the letters must be constructed by each panellist, alternating one word at a time. So off you go, Barry and Graham. Dear William, I am curious <laughs> to know what your plans are because I have heard rumours that you are planning to invade the country which I rule. So, look here. <laughs> When you... Come on. When you what? <laughs> it's the acoustics. Come. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. <laughs> Will you kindly <laughs> let me know in advance so we can arrange our deck chairs? <laughs> Unfortunately, the... Deck chairs are chargeable at <laughs> six pence per hour. <laughs> the measure of time. <laughs> I intend to prepare for your arrival with my donkey, <laughs> which is called Ned, and also called Edward. <laughs> But mainly, <laughs> called Harry. <laughs> so there we, <laughs> we uh, will go forward and backward and <laughs> sideways. Although we will not go upwards. <laughs> To meet our fate and our optician. <laughs> so, see you shortly. <laughs> bye, bye for now. Yours, Harold Regis. <laughs> kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> oh, mother. Harold, how the devil are you today? I like you very much, so I am coming with my croissant. <laughs> Just in case you do get hungry. <laughs> also, I will bring some donkeys. <laughs> You have several donkeys with no idea of love. <laughs> <laughs> my, how my big donkeys <laughs> will love your donkeys. <laughs> and also, I will love your <laughs> donkeys. <laughs> Because uh, I am French. <laughs> if you want something more from me, then you must fax me <laughs> at 
the office. Because my donkey <laughs> can answer faxes <laughs> on Tuesdays. <laughs> But not on Wednesdays <laughs> is uh, able. Able? Able. <coughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Lots of love from Guillaume. <laughs> well, it's very nearly the end of the show. Well, there is just time to fit in a round for the sweet toothed. Coincidentally, Jeremy. Uh, lo- <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the sound of mucus. <laughs> Anything else you want to get off your chest, first? <laughs> Coincidentally, Jeremy has recently learned how to make shoe pastry, but there aren't that many people who want shoes made out of pastry. <laughs> So, team suggestions, please, of movie titles to delight a sweet-toothed audience. Barry, you can start. Dial M for Werther's. <laughs> Graham? Stanley Kubrick's A Chocolate Orange. <laughs> Tim? The Bourneville Ultimatum. <laughs> Kung Fu Pan of Chocolat. <laughs> Petty Four, Horseman of the Apocalypse. <laughs> Marathon Man, recently remade as Snickers Man. The Guns of Toblerone. <laughs> Priscilla, Queen of the Desserts. Battle of the Little Cream Horn. <laughs> v for Vianetta. <laughs> Spotted Dick Tracy. Oh. Bring me the fudge of Alfredo <laughs> Garcia. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the chilly rambler of time pulls on the jersey of fate and the farmer of destiny tells him to stop molesting his cattle, (laughs) I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team Samantha, myself and our audience here in Guildford, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Jeremy Hardy will be given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week for a second visit to historic Guildford. In 1203, King John made Guildford Castle his country home and arrived here with his new bride, the 12-year-old Queen Isabel. They were married before a congregation of 100 barons and just after netball practice. (laughs) However, the marriage was annulled by the Pope when he discovered the couple were second cousins and consequently far too distantly related for a royal marriage. (laughs) Having divorced from Isabel, King John then married a French countess called Isabella as not only did she bring rich lands in France, but it also made for an easy change to his tattoo. (laughs) King John fought Philip of France for control of the great castles of Normandy. In 1204, he lost the Chateau Gaillard, so opted instead for a bottle of the House White. Guildford is found on the ancient Harrow Way. With its crude construction and uneven surface, the Harrow Way is claimed to be the oldest road in Britain, a claim disputed by anyone who's driven on the Guildford Bypass. (laughs) The author of Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll, is buried here. His family marked his gravestone with the inscription, Fell asleep, 14th January 1898. The law was later changed to make it illegal to bury elderly dozing relatives. (laughs) In 
It was at the Guildford Counselling Centre that the pioneering therapist, Dr James Barfield, repeatedly tried but failed to start a self-harming awareness group. He said it was like banging his head against a brick wall. <laughs> Companies based here include Colgate Palmolive. After the Queen toured their new toothpaste factory, Her Majesty was surprised to find that when she took off her protective cap, staff limed up to squeeze her by the bottom. <laughs> Guildford is the home of Britain's most successful female racing driver. Catherine Legg, who was recently invited to test a Formula One car fitted with the latest kinetic energy recuperation system, brake bias adjustment and wing drag reduction controls. But she didn't like the colour. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. <laughs> On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and on my right, Tim Taylor and Jeremy Hardy. And getting ready to enjoy some action on the desk next to me, please welcome our lovely scorer, the delightful Samantha. <laughs> OK, well, we kick off today with a round called Uxbridge English Dictionary. The English language has many terms which appear to be interchangeable, but this isn't always true. For example, there's an important difference in meaning between belief and faith. A belief is acceptance by the mind that something is true or real, underpinned by an emotional or spiritual sense of certainty, whereas your faith is what you wath with a faith flannel. <laughs> However, meanings are constantly changing, Tim, so let's hear any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Tim, can you start us? Suffragette, Ryanair. <laughs> uh, Graham. Grandy, Jack's grandmother. <laughs> Barry. Vanish, rather like a van. <laughs> Jeremy. Ball bearing. The side a gentleman dresses. <laughs> uh, Arsenal. The whole body. <laughs> Pastiche. What Sean Connery <laughs> eats in Cornwall. <laughs> Module. Christmas with the Who. Loosh, where Sean Connery takes his comfort break. <laughs> Jacuzzi, French for I know who did that in the bath. <laughs> Singe, what Sean Connery <laughs> confesses to in church. Singapore, Jeremy Hardy. Oh. We've all had a drink. <laughs> well, the uh, teams are going to sing along with a selection of well-known discs now in the round called Pick Up Song. <laughs> Samantha made her regular visit to the record library earlier to choose the team's songs, where she found the archivist trying to preserve some of the older records. Samantha says he was busy handling some fragile discs and just as she was getting her greatest hits out, she heard him crack one out in the storeroom. <laughs> well, Samantha is back and ready to give the discs a spin. You should sing along, teams, and continue when Samantha turns the volume down. If, when the music returns, you're within a gnat's crotchet of the original, I'll be awarding points. And too many points means you'll have to ask your wife to take them on her licence. <laughs> what do points mean? Points! That's right. 
And this week's prize will delight anyone who enjoys visiting ancient churches, examining commemorative plaques, and warmly greeting the church wardens they encounter along the way. It's this fine English heritage arse rubbing kit. <laughs> So Barry, you're the start oh. and I'd like you to accompany Elvis Presley singing Let Me Be Your Teddy Bear. A baby, let me be your loving teddy bear Put a chain around my neck and lead me anywhere Oh, let me be your teddy bear I don't want to be a tiger Cos tigers play too rough I don't want to be a lion Cos lions ain't the kind you love enough Just want to be Your teddy bear Put a chain around my neck And lead me anywhere Oh, let me be Your teddy bear Baby, let me be Around the night Well on, Barry. Well oh. done. I must say, with, with the help of the Guildford <laughs> Stuck in the 50s Society. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Tim, you're next. I'd like you to accompany the Talking Heads singing Psycho Killer. <laughs> I can't seem to face up to the facts. I'm tense and nervous and I can't relax. I can't sleep. Cause my bed's on fire Don't touch me, I'm a real live wire Psycho killer Qu'est-ce que c'est fa 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 better Run, 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 run away Oh, psycho killer Qu'est-ce que c'est fa 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 better Run, 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 run away. So, your turn now, Graham. Would you accompany the Sex Pistols singing Anarchy in the UK? <laughs> oh, I am an antichrist. I am an anarchista don't know what I want but I know how to get it I want to destroy passerby cause I want to be anarchy <laughs> no dogs buddy anarchy for the UK come in sometimes and maybe I give a wrong time to stop a traffic line. Your future dream is a sharpie scheme, cos I wanna be... Yes, and uh, finally, Jeremy. Would you like to uh, accompany Sting and the police singing So Lonely? <clears throat>
Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you just... Uncanny. Yes. I think it just goes to show that not all castratos have great voices. <laughs> it wasn't worth going to that much trouble, was it? <laughs> you win some, you lose some, Judge. <laughs> well, the teams are going to give full vent to their acting skills now in the round called Sound Charades. It's a radio version of the old TV favourite, Give Us a Clue. In the original, mimes were conducted in total silence to an ecstatic audience. The team's version is exactly the same, except for those two bits I just told you about. <laughs> the grand master of the game was, of course, Lionel Blair. Yeah! Who always treated his team well, even taking them on expensive holidays. Christopher Biggins recalls once climbing out of the swimming pool, a little shivery and dripping wet, when Lionel kindly tossed him over a towel. <laughs> Jeremy, you're to start, please, and your title will surely be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. Okay. So, for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Watchdog. Watchdog. So, off you go, Tim and Jeremy. It's uh, television, and, and it's, it's one word. Yeah, one word. Oh. And it goes like this. Oh, what's the time? Ow! 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 Ah, three o'clock. Thanks, Rover. <laughs> the end. Watchdog. <laughs> so, uh, your turn, Baron Graham, and your title's now being exhibited on the laser display board. Okay. And the mystery voice for the listeners at home. Oh. The importance of being earnest. The importance of being earnest. Play in a film, and it's five words. Five words. Goes like this. Goes like this. Wasn't Eric Morecambe great? Yes. Yes, he was, but don't underestimate the vital role played by his partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the importance it's of being early. Oh. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's too easy, it is. Well, here's, here's another title going up now, and uh, mystery voice at home. This is for you, Tim and Jeremy. Grand Designs. Grand designs. Two words. Two words, and it's a television programme. It goes like this. <clears throat> Hello, dear, what are you knitting? Oh, it's a little cardy. It's part of my new range. What, you knitting a stove? No, no, no. My grandson says I should have my own label. Oh! What, so people know where to send you when you get lost? <laughs> no, no, my own haute couture knitwear range. Ooh. I'm getting ready for the Paris Fashion Week. Ooh. I'm showing. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a catwalk and everything. Your cat can't walk anymore. I know. <laughs> I can slide in down these little... These little... Little booties oh. are very slippery. Oh, so, so what are you going to call this label? My grandson says it should be named after me. Oh, what do you mean, dot, dot, dot? <laughs> no, no, I'm not called dot. <laughs> Something like House of Man. Oh, the end. <laughs> Gran. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Gran. You, yes, you do. It begins with D. <laughs> <laughs> grand design. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, grand. I'll see yeah. what you did there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, a final title now being displayed for you, Barry and Graham. And uh, once again, the mystery voice. <laughs> the home. The Thing. The Thing. Oh, oh, made a film of that, did they? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it's a film. <laughs> Two words. Two it words. is a film, yes. It's a film, yes. 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 Something like this. Yeah. Dougal! Uh, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have had your tea. No, no, no. <laughs> Matter of fact, I made myself a nice cup of coffee. What? I'm, I've got a, what do you call it, a, a catheter. You, uh, 
You mean cafetier? No, no. <laughs> no, no, I was at home. Oh, no. well. Oh, never mind that. It's enough of your amusing misunderstandings. Now, <laughs> have you brought me the... What's it? What? The, the you know, the... Um, Oh, oh, you know what I mean. Oh, you mean the, um... Aye, the, the... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll... Oh, it'll be in your sporran. <laughs> oh, you mean this? Don't put it away, <laughs> no. I didn't mean that. No, I meant the, uh... Oh, oh, uh, oh the... this? No, no, not that either. I'm surprised you kept it, to be honest. Now, uh, uh, uh... Oh, what do you call it? Oh, you mean this? Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Why didn't you say so? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Is Would you keep in a sporum? The that... thing? Oops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a brisk round that was. <laughs> The next round is an interesting version of the Sunday Evening Radio 4 show, Poetry Please. Or, as most listeners will know it, Poetry Click. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be examining how great works of poetry are inspired. For example, what prompted Robert Burns to write this. We slick it, Karin Timras Bisti. Oh, what a panex in thy bisti. Perhaps we'll never know. OK, I'll give the teams the first lines to some well-known poems and ask them to suggest how the works might have been completed less successfully. So the first one's for you, Jeremy. Uh -huh. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art... Bloody miserable. <laughs> uh, the answer is uh, more lovely and more temperate. Barry. Yeah. T'was brillig and the slithy toves did gar and gimble in the wabe. Uh, never mind all that, sir. Blow into this, please. <laughs> As we all know, that was Lewis Carroll from Jabberwocky. Oh. Graham. Miss Joan Hunter Dunn, Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. Paging Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is uh, furnished and burnished by Aldershot son, yeah. uh, John yeah. Betjeman. Tim. Yep. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though... Quote-unquote was on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you told me to say. <laughs> it's uh, as though of hemlock I had drunk, John Keats, Ode to a Nightingale. <clears throat> Jeremy, this is the night mail crossing the border, bringing the cheque and the postal order, letters for the rich, letters for the poor. But mostly catalogues. <laughs> the shop at the corner and the girl next door is with W.H. Auden night train. Barry, the owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They drowned. <laughs> <laughs> they took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound um. note, Edward Lear. Graham, half a league, half a league, half a league. Paging Arthur Lee. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually onward all in the valley of death rode the 600. Uh, well, yeah. So Tennyson charged the light brigade. <laughs> yeah. Finally, Tim. Hmm. Bent double like old beggars under sacks. Knock kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge till... We got off our Ryanair flight. <laughs> Haunting flares, we turned our backs, Wilfred Owen. OK, well, here's some for any of you to have a go at. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, should old acquaintance be forgot and old Lang Syne, Robert Burns. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? No. <laughs> The Holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pasture scene, William Blake, Jerusalem. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I'm behind you. <laughs> I do not sleep, Mary Elizabeth Fry. It was a lover and his lass with a hey and a ho and a... 
another hoe. <laughs> The hay nonny no, that uh, the green cornfield did pass, Shakespeare. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest, yo-ho-ho, ho, and... Another failed resuscitation. <laughs> <laughs> and a bottle of rum, oh. Robert Louis Stevenson. And finally, sexual intercourse began in... Hazelmere. It's 1963, which was rather late for me, Philip Larkin. That was, uh, um, I know what everyone's thinking. Why aren't there more ducks on the radio? Well, the teams are set to bring duck performance to the radio. Each will reprise a classic scene from film or musical theatre with one of their number playing a central role as a duck. Barry and Graham, I'd like you to perform the song I Remember It Well from Gigi with Barry in the Maurice Chevalier role and Graham as a duck taking the Hermione Gingold role. We met at nine. <laughs> it was on time. <laughs> ah, yes, I remember. Well, we dined with friends <laughs> at tennis sang. <laughs> I guess I remember it well. That dazzling April moon. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Yes, I remember it well. For our next scene, we'll be looking to the film epic for our inspiration. And in this scene, teams, I'd like you to all perform as ducks. I shall take the part with the most lines. OK, music, please. I bring a message from your master, Marcus Licinius Crassus, commander of Rome. By command of his most merciful excellency, your lives are to be spared. Slaves you were and slaves you remain. But the terrible penalty of crucifixion has been set aside on the single condition that you identify the body or the living person of the slave called Spartacus. Well, it's very nearly the end of the show. <laughs> well, there is just time to fit in a round looking at the effects of advancing age. How many of us find ourselves in a room wondering what on earth we went in there for? <laughs> I'm looking at 900 now. <laughs> so, teams, your suggestions, please, of musicals and show tunes likely to appeal to an audience of pensioners. Uh, you can start, Jeremy. I was born under a wandering... Oh, a wandering... <laughs> I was born... I was, oh, a wandering... Oh, never mind. Barry. Jesus Christ, soup again. <laughs> Tim. As long as he feeds me. <laughs> Graham. Annie, get your teeth. <laughs> I'm putting in my top set. <laughs> Oh, that's the one with Ginger Codgers and Fred Astaire lift. <laughs> Little shop of Horlicks. <laughs> Staying alive. <laughs> Joseph and his amazing Technicolor war wound. 
A little night mucus. <laughs> I'm reviewing my constipation. Paint your wig on. <laughs> Kiss me, Pate. I'm getting buried in the morning. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the CDs of hope are washed off the desert island of time by the waves of fate, and the audience of eternity wonders what kind of idiot leaves his eight treasured CDs on a tidal beach, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team, Samantha, myself, and our audience here in Guildford, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Jeremy Hardy will be given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. I'm sorry I haven't a clue. The antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week on a visit to Gateshead in the fine county of Tyne and Weir. Nestling on the south bank of the River Tyne, the people of Gateshead have seven bridges providing access to the suburb of Newcastle. <laughs> Famous names associated with Tyneside include the Italian revolutionary fighter and nation builder Giuseppe Garibaldi, who lived here in the 1850s. Garibaldi was honoured by his nation in being voted Italian Military Hero of the Year from 1862 to 2011. <laughs> the renowned 19th century physician Thomas Addison was born here. It was Addison who identified Addison's disease and so began the trend of physicians giving their names to medical conditions. In retirement, Addison turned to charitable work with the fallen women of Newcastle. He died in 1860 following a short illness despite specialist treatment from his colleague, Dr Arthur Clapp. <laughs> Newcastle's magnificent railway station is served by several operators. East Coast Main Line have services to London and Edinburgh, while Trans Pennine have male staff dressed in frocks. <laughs> We are today guests of the Sage Gateshead. The venue has several spaces, including the Northern Rock Foundation Hall, named after the famous bank, and the Sir Michael Straker Cafe, named after Sir Michael Straker, best known for giving his name to a cafe. <laughs> Gateshead's Baltic Gallery is host to this year's Turner Prize. Hotly tipped to win the often controversial art competition is an installation consisting of a family takeaway burger meal in a large styrofoam box. You can tell it's good because the fries follow you around the room. <laughs> But the Baltic isn't alone in ushering people into a room to be bewildered by odd exhibits. Let's meet the teams. On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. And on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Marcus Brigstock. And our lovely lady scorer who can't wait to handle the team's points. Please welcome the ever-delightful Samantha. OK, the first round is all about film titles, which puts Tim Brooke Taylor at an advantage. Tim is no stranger to the movie-making business, as he once had a contract to work at Paramount Studios, although he usually had no more than two lines, who takes milk and who takes sugar. <laughs> There's nothing says more about a movie than its title, so I'll ask the teams to suggest films that would have been quite different if just one letter had gone missing from the title. Barry, you can start. I'll have a twit. Tim. Goat Busters. 
Marcus. Somebody up there licks me. <laughs> uh, Graham. The itches of Eastwick. <laughs> the, the Scottish Western High New. <laughs> the Godfather. Lice in Wonderland. <laughs> Who framed Roger Rabbi? <laughs> True git. <laughs> Cream. <laughs> Cream two. Cream three. <laughs> when the creaming had to stop. One loo over the cuckoo's nest. Monty Python's The Life of Bran. Rear Widow. Monty Python's The Quest for the Holy Grill. The greatest Tory ever told. Brave Hat. <laughs> Annie at your gun. They shoe horses, don't they? <laughs> e, the extraterrestrial. <laughs> well, the teams are going to sing for us now in the round called One Song to the Tune of Another. <laughs> Piano accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell. Listeners will be... Uh, Listeners will be interested to learn that Colin has recently been doing film scores. He gave Gone with the Wind 8 out of 10. <laughs> we'll start with you, Barry. Uh, I'd like you to sing the words of Shirley Bassey's Goldfinger to the tune of Babyface. Goldfinger, he's a man, the man with the Midas touch. A spider's touch, such a cold finger, beckons you to enter his web of sin, but, 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 but don't go in, Golden words. He will pour in your ear his lies, he can't disguise what you fear for a golden gold old man. He's kissed her, it's a kiss of death from Mr. Goldfinger. Okay, so you now, Tim, I'd like you to sing the words of Teenage Dirtbag by Wheatus to the tune of Waltzing Matilda. Her name is Noel, I have a dream about her. She rings my bell, I got a gym class. In half an hour, oh, how she rocks in keds. And tube socks, but she doesn't know who I am And she doesn't give a damn about me Cos I'm just a teenage dirtbag baby Yeah, I'm just a teenage dirtbag baby Listen to Iron Maiden Baby with me, her boyfriend's a dick okay. Your turn, Graham. Uh, I'd like you to sing the words of Fog on the Tyne <laughs> to the tune of I Love Paris in the Springtime. <laughs> Sitting in a sleazy snack bar <laughs> Sucking subtly sausage rolls <laughs> Sleeping down slowly, slipping down sideways Think I'll sign off the door Cos the fog on the Tyne is all mine, all mine The fog on the Tyne's all mine The fog on the Tyne is all mine, all mine The fog on the Tyne is all mine And finally, Marcus, I'd like you to sing the words of Big Mouth Strikes Again by the Smiths to the tune of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> sweetness, sweetness, I was only joking when I said I'd like to 
smash every tooth in your head. <laughs> sweetness, sweetness, I was only joking when I said by rights you should be bludgeoned in your bed. <laughs> Now I know how Joan of Arc felt. Now I know how Joan of Arc felt as the flames rose to her Roman nose and her walkman started to melt. Oh, big mouth, la da 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 da, big mouth, la da 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 da, big mouth strikes again and I've got. To take my place in the human race. Marcus, there with the very song that got him thrown off X Factor. Mm. <laughs> now, the next round is all about identifying mysterious symptoms. Barry Cryer was telling us he recently noticed his dog was acting strangely, so Barry took him to be examined. The vet explained he'd have to stop rubbing his backside on the carpet as he was trying to examine the dog. <laughs> OK, well, we'll start with you, Tim and Marcus. You're suffering from an unusual medical complaint and have just been called for your appointment with doctors Barry and Graham. You must outline your symptoms to them and then they'll be judged based on how accurately they're able to diagnose your condition. Now, the identity of your complaints is now being displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. <laughs> and uh, for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Tim and Marcus think they're Greek. Tim and Marcus think they're Greek. So off you go. Tim and Marcus. Hello there. Good Hello. morning. Good morning, morning Dr. Uh, uh, come in and sit down and take your clothes off. <laughs> what uh, seems to be the trouble? Well, to start off, I think we may have lost our marbles. Mm. <laughs> oh. uh, that was a long time ago, and to be honest, we, we, we've lost it, lost it all now. Yeah, we have. <laughs> um, um, Could you give us a bob, please? What, uh, what, have what, you what exactly have you lost? <laughs> Everything. Sorry, both of you are speaking at the same time. And sorry. That's well, right. we're in practice. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what exactly have you lost? You mean everything? Well, pretty much. Well, most of our plates, haven't we? Uh... Yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah. There's no improvement. Sometimes you'll work as much as two hours a week and, um, <laughs> and nothing seems to improve. And, and, uh, um, and I'm you... getting fatter. <laughs> You look uh, to be well into your 20s. Have you retired? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, state, state yeah. law. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Twice yeah. now. Mm. <laughs> I think it's time for lunch, isn't it? Again? It's about 11 yeah, why not? <laughs> it's about 11 o'clock. Well, I think, I think we can see what's wrong with these people. Yes? They're Greek. Yes. So good, OK, so it's your turn to be patient now, Barry and Graham. The identity of your mystery medical condition will now be displayed to the audience via the laser display board, while here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. <laughs> Barry is turning into Ricky Gervais. Barry is turning into Ricky Gervais. Morning. Morning, morning. Um, Sorry, have you been waiting long? <laughs> yeah. Could you just put your clothes back on, please? <laughs> I, sh I should explain, I'm not the one with the problem, I'm just his friend. It's Barry, who I'm very concerned about. And lucky to be so, in my opinion. Yes, he's, uh, something's come over him, he's, he's turning very strange. I mean, he, he, he was all right till he left the office and then something <laughs> weird happened. Is he called Barry, this person? I am not called Barry. Is this some sort of ironic joke you're doing here? See? See I know that, doing. mate. He thinks he's doing irony all the time. You're sad. You don't understand irony. No. I know irony. I define it. He lives in a fantasy world. All these famous friends he claims, Johnny Depp and, oh, Keith Chegwin. That sounds very nasty. Yeah, and started using words, weird words like pong. Pong, 
Pong is an old word for a smell. A lot of people find it offensive. Pong is not an offensive word. There you go. I have spoken, therefore it is true. I wouldn't mind, but he started bullying little bald-headed men. (laughs) You don't get irony, do you? I feel sorry for you. Is that pretty much all the symptoms, or are there any extras? (laughs) (laughs) I could go into them, but life's too short. (laughs) He's a smart merchant. I don't know. (laughs) We think we might have got it. We think he's. I think you're probably suffering from Ricky Gervais. Well, the next game is a new one called Word Builders. In this round, I'll provide the teams with a word. Then the first player must himself come up with a word that starts with the word I gave him, hence building a word. Then each player in turn has to come up with a word that starts with the word I provided, thereby word building. So, Tim, let's play Word Builders. And the starting word for you to build with is word. Off you go. Word builders. Okay, Barry, a word beginning with word, please. Um, word builders. Marcus. Word builders. Graham. Word builders. Well, that went well. <laughs> Do join us next time for another edition of Word Builders. Oh, shut up! (laughs) We delve now into the world of broadcast production. An important component is the signature tune. You only have to hear that jaunty tune at the beginning of Round Britain Quiz to know what's coming up. Apparently they play the same tune at the end as well. The game is called Spot the Sig, and the team's challenge is to identify the name of a programme simply by hearing its signature tune. OK, so here's the first one. Uh, that was the detonation game. <laughs> Very good. And another one? Fleeced Enders. <laughs> I should have explained there are nearly 20 of these, so you might as well get into it. <laughs> Do you want to contact your families at all? <laughs> uh, here's another one. The uh, Academy's programme. Academies get the money. Superheads in secondary schools. That's Biker Gove. (laughs) All right, let's have another one. That's got to be lust a minute. All right, how about, how about this one? Oh, yes, yes. Whales of the unexpected. <laughs> uh, how about this one now, then? Hang on. I'd like to see this. It must be step turn gun. <laughs> and uh, another one. <laughs> um, could it possibly be? Have I got juice for you? <laughs> <laughs> and still they come. Can anyone guess this one? A 
on a little dish. Don't she let the fishy when the wood comes in? I think that's why I five O. All right, what about this one? Desert Island slip discs. Mm. <laughs> Are you clapping because you hope that's the end? <laughs> Don't worry, nearly halfway through now. <laughs> All right, how about this one? That's definitely Randy Pandy. <laughs> I'd love to see that too. <laughs> Take this another one. Evening all. Can I interest you in an extended warranty? There's got to be Dixons of Doc Green. <laughs> Oh, they're having a barbecue at the back, look. <laughs> Here's another one. Perfect. 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 <laughs> That's the Stalin buds of May. <laughs> And finally, uh... <laughs> Trumpton. Well, the teams are going to write to each other some letters oh. now. Writing in the English language began in Anglo-Saxon times with the scholar Edgar, Bishop of Durham. He wrote the first ever documents in an early form of English using a basic alphabet which had no Fs or Ts. He couldn't spell for toffee. <laughs> Barry and Graham, I'd like you to start by composing a letter from Angela Merkel to Silvio Berlusconi <laughs> and then Tim and Marcus will come up with a reply and so on. However, the challenge is that the letters must be constructed by each panellist alternating one word at a time. So off you go, Barry and Graham. Dear Bunga How I miss you and furthermore how I long is <laughs> A <laughs> Peace Now <laughs> Look here <laughs> We have to talk together about the thing that we shared together I have realised that you are one naughty Bunga. And in the time that we were together, you were twice caught in the underwear of a strange yet <laughs> tasteless, although... Mature woman who was trying at <laughs> once to relieve herself <laughs> with caution. <laughs> and furthermore, you are unforgivable <laughs> yet <laughs> strangely. Attractive. Therefore, 
I am signing off this letter without a kiss or anything. <laughs> so goodbye and farewell. Bunga. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Hey. Angela. <laughs> Merkel. If uh, you want me, you only have to take your dress off. <laughs> and then we can get filthy. <laughs> What's a matter for <laughs> you? Shut up, uh, yeah. <laughs> face. I'm hoping that we can solve this problem if you send us a load of <laughs> money <laughs> and some horse. <laughs> Manure. <laughs> I hope that you can come to see me shortly because I am going to give you one. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> Possibly even three. <laughs> Lots of love from Silvio. Hey! <laughs> Well, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time to fit in a round of Pest Controller's songbook. <laughs> Coincidentally, Barry and Graham were saying earlier that Broadcasting House is infested with rats. They noticed them as they foraged for food from the dustbins. <laughs> and perhaps if they had a bit more work, Barry and Graham could afford to eat in the canteen. <laughs> OK, teams, your suggestions of song titles likely to appeal to an audience of Pest Controllers. Marcus, can you start us? Fleas release me. <laughs> Barry, where did you get that rat? Tim. Weevil woman. Uh, Graham. Uh, from West Side Story, termite, termite. <laughs> I can't let maggot go. <laughs> See you later, fumigator. <laughs> the sun has got his rat on. <laughs> kiss me, hornet, hornet, kiss me. Wherever I lay my rat, that's home. <laughs> I'm picking up infestations. Message in a blue bottle. Oh, I do like insecticide the seaside. <laughs> Ten blue bottles hanging on the wall. <laughs> there was an old woman who swallowed a fly. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Why, what are you doing? <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the night owl of time hoots incessantly under the moon of destiny and is fined 50 quid for sounding his horn in a built-up area, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team Samantha, myself and our audience here in Gateshead, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Dawn Garden, Timbrook Taylor and Marcus Brigstock were being given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week for a second visit to Gateshead on the south bank of the River Tyne. The name Gateshead is a corruption of the original name for the town, which was Goatshed. 
In Roman times, the garrison here was occupied by troops from northern Italy, where they kept mountain goats. And... <laughs> And the penalty was exile to Gateshead. <laughs> Gateshead enjoys fine views across to Newcastle, or as it's now known, Sports Directville. <laughs> the recent name change of St James's Park was defended by Mike Ashley, speaking at his lovely house, Willow Lodge, or as it's now known, Broken Windows. <laughs> As the Tyne docks were amongst the last in Britain to decline, they attracted labour from other ports, including Liverpool. When the last quays closed here, the Liverpool dockers took their redundancies and went into small businesses. Through a skylight, usually. <laughs> The movie director Ridley Scott, who was born near here but grew up in Teesside, is best known for his 1982 film Blade Runner. Genetically engineered organic robots, almost like real humans, inhabit a dystopian acid rain soaked cityscape. <laughs> Still, that's Teesside for you. Blade Runner wasn't a commercial success, but after 30 years has become a cult classic. What other long-term failures here might eventually reach a minority audience? Let's meet the teams. On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. And on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Marcus Brigstock. And placing her comfortable seat on my left hand, please welcome our scorer, the ever-delightful Samantha. OK, we start with the round called Uxbridge English Dictionary. Uh, the uh, English language has thrown up many words which appear to mean the same thing, but it's important to understand the subtle differences. For example, let's take the words articulation and elocution. Articulation is the coherent expression of thoughts or ideas in spoken words and the manner in which those words are pronounced, whereas elocution is how they kill murderers in America. <laughs> Words are constantly changing their meanings, team, so I'd like you to share with us any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Uh, Tim, could you start? Why I, Geordie Broadband. <laughs> Graham. Fiddle dee dee, Jack's violin. <laughs> Barry. Peckish, rather like Gregory Peck. <laughs> Marcus. Brisket, fast-moving old man. <laughs> Untidy, let Jack loose. <laughs> Bordello, off-hand greeting. <laughs> Buffalo, naked greeting. <laughs> Condesc condescending, <laughs> criminal going down. <laughs> Turpentine, a Geordie highwayman. <laughs> Kindling, digital book burning. <laughs> <laughs> Herbicide, the murder of a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> Shrubbery. What Sean Connery says when he sends a chicken back in a <laughs> restaurant. Twirled. Yorkshire. Well, it's music time now with a game called Pick Up Song. This is where the team sing along to some favourite records. Earlier, music researcher Samantha made her regular visit down to the record library where she found the kindly old archivist was suffering. Budgetary cutbacks mean there's no heating and he doesn't even have anywhere to sit. So Samantha says to cheer him up, she went back and gave him a pull over a desk and an office chair. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, Samantha is now back and poised at the turntable, ready to give the discs a spin. You should sing along, teams, until, at my signal, Samantha turns the volume down. Continue singing, and if, on the music's return, you're within a cheesy quaver of the original, I'll be awarding points. And points mean gaining a tactical advantage over the opposition with the object of winning the competition. What do points mean? <laughs> and this week's prize will prove invaluable to anyone considering setting up a vagrant cleaning business. It's this commercial tramp steamer. <laughs> so, Tim, you're to start, and I'd like you to accompany Rebecca Black singing Friday. Seven a up, waking up in the morning. Gotta be fresh. Gotta go downstairs. Gotta have my ball. Gotta have cereal. Seeing everything that time is going, ticking on and on. Everyone's rushing. Gotta get down to the bus stop. Gotta catch my bus. I see my friends kicking in the front seat, sitting in the back seat. Gotta make my mind up. Which seat can I take? It's Friday. Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Friday, Friday, getting down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Partying, partying, yeah. Partying, partying, yeah. Party. Party, party, party. Beginning to worry for Tim. <laughs> you okay. <were. laughs> so you're next, Barry. I, I'm not I'd like you to accompany. <laughs> I'd like you to accompany reel to reel singing. I like to move it, move it. 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 You like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to. Move it, I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it, I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. All girls all over the world, original man, stuntman, pon your kiss, man. I love how all girls move them body. And when you move your body, and move it nice and sweet and sexy, all right. Well, you can say what you like about Barry Cryer. <laughs> he can't hear you. <laughs> so, you now, Graham, would you accompany the gummy bear singing the gummy bear song? Chummy, funny, lucky gummy bear. I'm a jelly bear, cause I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a moving, grooving, jamming, singing gummy bear. Gummy, 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 gummy bear. Gummy, 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 gummy bear. Bye, ding, ba dooly, party, bum, ding, ba dooly, party, free, ding, da tory, party, party, pop. Riding the Tory party, bumping the Tory party, breathing the Tory party, party pop. Oh, I'm a gummy bear, yes, I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a yummy, chummy, funny, lucky gummy bear. Oh, I'm a jelly bear, cause I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a moving, grooving, jump. And finally, would you, Marcus, please accompany the Sugar Hill Gang singing Rapper's Delight? Yes. <laughs> Say hip hop, the hippie, the hippie to the hip hip hop, and you don't stop. Rock it to the bang bang boogie, see up jump, the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie, the beat. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. You see, I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. 
to the black, to the white, the red and the brown, the purple and yellow. But first I gotta bang, bang, the boogie to the boogie, sit up, jump, the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie, let's rock. And you don't stop. Rock that rhythm, make your body rock. Well, so far you've heard my voice, but I brought two friends along. And the next on the mic is my man Hank. Come on, Hank, sing that song. Check it out. I'm the C-A-S and the O-V-A and the rest is F-L-Y. You see, I go by the code of the doctor of the mix and the reasons I tell you why. You see, I'm six foot one and I'm tons of fun. One of you was clapping out of time. A typical Geordie crowd, determined to make the best of it, aren't you? <laughs> the teams are going to display their acting skills now in the round called Sound Charades. Uh, this is a radio version of the old TV favourite, Give Us a Clue. In the original, the teams weren't allowed to speak, causing the audience to collapse in helpless laughter. In exactly the same way, this spoken version doesn't. The grand master of the game was, of course, Lionel Blair. Yay! He and his team became great friends off screen, with Lionel often taking them sailing on his yacht. Christopher Biggins recalls how Lionel skippered him and Melvin Hayes regaining control when there was a nasty gale with a huge swell on trying to blow them off course. <laughs> Tim and Marcus, you're to start, please, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. And uh, for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Holmes under the hammer. Holmes under the hammer. Off you go, Tim and Marcus. It's four words, and it's a television programme, and it goes like this. Ha <laughs> ha! So we meet at last. Moriarty. <laughs> to see you involved in all this. What have you done with Watson, and why am I tied to this giant bell inside Big Ben just before it's about to strike one o'clock? Do you plan to deafen me or something? <laughs> it would seem your great mind has failed you at the last. It's not the bell but you that will be struck at 1pm, and secondly, it's the bell that's called Big Ben, not the clock. I thought everyone knew that, you poor fool. <laughs> The end. <laughs> Does the word Holmes occur in this? Yes. Holmes. Uh, do the words Big Ben, Clock or One occur in the... Uh... No. No. That's narrowed the field. <laughs> look, a smug look on your face. You've already got it. No. Well, no, not no, at all. No. Holmes. Holmes like the clappers. <laughs> If I could give you another clue. Go on, then. If a man in ridiculous trousers were standing on Sherlock's head saying, you can't touch this, that would also... <laughs> yeah. Holmes it... under the hammer. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, your turn, Barry and Graham, and your title's now being exhibited on the laser display board. <laughs> And uh, here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Whatever happened to baby Jane? Whatever happened to baby Jane? It's uh, five words. Yep. Five? And five it's, words. it's a film. It's a film. It goes like this. Dougal! Oh. <laughs> uh, is that you? Hamish, you'll have had your tea. Oh. <laughs> For a moment, I mistook you for one of those body snatchers that have recently invaded the Glen. No, no. Since the invasion, nobody's safe. <laughs> well, you say that, Hamish, but can you name a single body that has been snatched? By the body snatchers? Aye. Well, there's uh, Big Tam, the bank manager. I haven't seen him lately. <laughs> oh, when do you ever see a bank manager these days? <laughs> True enough. I'll tell you who I haven't seen around. That wee tot that belongs to Morag and Alec Eyre. The Eyre kiddie, yes. yes. <laughs> the, one, the one they named after the eponymous heroine created by Charlotte Bronte. Oh. <laughs> oh, the very same. Where could she be? You're right. 
That is a mystery. Well, goodbye. I'm going to presume it's not the invasion of the body snatchers. Oh. I'm well, close, though, aren't I? You're cl- very close. Mm. In, in that that's also a film. Yeah. <laughs> Child, baby, baby. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane? Yeah. <laughs> Well, this next round is about warnings. Uh, Anyone travelling through an airport in the last 20 years will have heard those announcements that unattended luggage might be taken away and destroyed. Well, it's about time they found out who's doing that. (laughs) Okay, I've been supplied with a selection of cautionary labels which are incomplete, and I'd like the teams to guess what the cautions might be. So we'll start... We'll start with you, Tim. Uh, here's a cautionary label on a packet of fish hooks. Warning, harmful if... You look like Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> <laughs> harmful, uh, she says, ha- harmful if swallowed. If you're <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Barry, how about this? To avoid suffocation, keep... Breathing out. <laughs> it's a plastic bag away from head. Graham... Caution, remove infant before... Cutting cord. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually before folding for storage. It's a <laughs> colla- collapsible baby buggy. Uh, Marcus, here's a warning from an old VCR manual. Resetting the clock to an earlier time will not... Transport you to Sunderland. <laughs> It's actually, it will not accurately record past events. Uh, back... <laughs> you said it. Back to you, Tim. X Factor board game. Fun for the... Hard of thinking. <laughs> Fun for the whole family. Um, oh. Barry, can you complete this? Keep face and other vulnerable body parts away from... Berlusconi. <laughs> The actual answer is potential cord rebound path. That's uh, on a bungee cord. Graham, do not use on kittens or puppies if... Anyone can see what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) If under two weeks of age, uh, it's for flea and tick shampoo. And uh, finally, Marcus... During sexual activity, if you become dizzy or nauseated, call... Lady Prescott and ask how she copes with it. (laughs) Uh, It's uh, from a Viagra package. It says, call your doctor right away. Well, here are some for any of you to have a go at. Preparation H. Hemorrhoid cream. Use with... Gay abandon. (laughs) <laughs> Use with caution. Uh, oh, this is on a, a packet of suppositories. Do not, do not use this product during... The full moon. <laughs> during pregnancy. If swallowed or lodged in ear or nose... You're not using the condom properly. <laughs> uh, the, the answer is C, doctor. Uh, and it's on a packet of AA batteries. <laughs> Ex lax laxatives. In case of accidental overdose, seek a cork. <laughs> so, it says seek professional assistance. Not that they'll want to help. <laughs> Warning, this bag is not... Up for it. (laughs) uh, The answer is not a toy. Uh, It's a bubble wrap container. Well, it's music time again now with Just a Minute, and it's a musical version of the long-running wireless favourite Just a Minute. So, Colin, if you would please... 
Uh, hang on, Colin, I, I haven't finished. I was, I was going to say, if you would please leave the piano alone. <laughs> we'll get on with just a minute. So, please welcome the four vibrant, energetic, pulsating, effervescent, energetic and exciting players who are also lively, entertaining, quick-witted, comical, energetic, amusing, side-splitting, waggish, uproarious and now patronised into a coma. <laughs> and Marcus, you're to go first and the song I'd like you to sing with your trademark wit and erudition without hesitation, deviation or repetition is the runaway train. <laughs> runaway train came down the track and she blew, she blasted. The recently escaped engine moved along the line and she tooted, she blasted, honks. And Tim has challenged Marcus there after only a few seconds. Tim, what did you notice was amiss there in... <laughs> Marcus is singing. Was it hesitation, deviation, or repetition in this song we love so much? <laughs> Tim, of course, a great veteran of the game, has played for many, many years. Marcus, more of a newcomer and doing very well, but Tim wasn't going to give him any quarter. And came straight in. Well, Tim. <laughs> Yes, Greg is now challenged. Oh, what was it? Yeah, uh, challenged you were... Tim for hesitation. I, I think that's a fair challenge, Tim. You, you hesitated there, rather. You didn't come in with the nature of your challenge when you were asked to. And Graham rightly picked up on that. Graham, of course, a very experienced player of the game. Over to you, Graham. The free uh, locomotive hurried along. The two pieces of metal, uh, her whistle wide and her throttle back. And she, oh God, um, <laughs> tooted, hooted, uh, prooted, nooted and wooted. The engineer said the, uh, the machine must halt and... And Marcus has challenged Graham, doing very well there, but Marcus seems to have noticed uh, a chink in the armour. What was it, Marcus, that it was alerted a, you? It was a deviation from... Words. <laughs> it was, I think, Marcus. Although, and music, uh, too. <laughs> Marcus, a less experienced player of the game, although he was able to notice that you did indeed deviate from the words, Graham. Yes. Uh, Graham, quite old, but still got some of his marbles. <laughs> so, yes, correct challenge there, Marcus. You take over, and there are only three seconds left to go. The engineer said the train must halt, and she screeched. And I'm afraid the whistle went when oh. Barry uh, challenged there. What was going to be the nature of your challenge? I thought we'd had train rather pointedly before Marcus actually uttered the word. Yes. I... <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Barry. I'm afraid no one here has a clue what you're talking about. It's all rather sad, isn't it? Well, I tell you what we'll do. We'll start with a second song, and oh. Barry, you can begin with the second song, which is Tequila. Would you please start, Barry? <laughs> Tequila! Graham has challenged there. What was the nature of your, your challenge? Graham? Impending repetition. <laughs> Impending repetition. I don't think we can quite give you that. Put me to the but test. But the audience enjoyed your challenge so much. <laughs> But uh, I will give you an extra point for that in this game that we do love so much. And remember, this is going out not only to Great Britain and her dominions and Commonwealth, but also her colonies and dependencies, the Raj, Malaya, Siam, Abyssinia, Gaul, Macedonia, the Holy Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the World of Leather, and Seton Karoo. Well, it's uh, very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time to fit in a roundabout scary movies. 
and probably the most famous British horror movie makers were Hammer Film Productions. In the 1990s, the company's back catalogue was bought by the art collector Charles Saatchi, instantly doubling his collection of rubbish pictures. <laughs> Now, not everyone enjoys being frightened out of their wits, so teams, I'd like you to suggest titles of movie remakes which are less scary than the originals. Uh, so, Marcus, you could start us. The Texas Chainsaw Manicure. <laughs> and Barry? Dr. Jekyll. <laughs> Tim? Picnic at Northern Rock. <laughs> oh, <God>. Scares me. <laughs> Graham? An American Warehouse in London. Alien versus Predator versus Tinky Winky. <laughs> Interview with the umpire. <laughs> Mary Shelley's Frankenspencer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look now. <laughs> the bird. <laughs> Bram Stoker's spatula. Quite a mass and the tit. Shallow gravy. Have we had Rosemary's booby? You may have done, not us. Bring me the shed of Alfredo Garcia. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the little gherkin of time pops out of the Big Mac of destiny before, <laughs> before the dirty old man is asked to do his buttons up... <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So from the team, Samantha, myself, and the good people of Gateshead, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Harry Pryor, Graham Gardner, Tim Bill Taylor, and Marcus Brigstock. We've been given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs> We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. <laughs> You join us this week on a visit to Watford in the county of Hertfordshire. The first public mention of the name Watford was at the proclamation of the town's Anglo-Saxon Charter of 1042. The second public mention was just now. <laughs> Local man Fred Housego won Mastermind in 1980. The London cabbie from Croxley passed on only one question, which was, in monetary terms, what is the meaning of the word change? The former Spice Girl, Emma Bunton, lives nearby. Emma left the group in 1999 to become a former Spice Girl. <laughs> Watford is home to the British Literacy Skills Research Facility. Its senior practitioner, Dr James Holland, was recently awarded an oboe for his work on dyslexia. <laughs> The truck manufacturers, Iveco, are based here and built rubbish lorries for the council, so they, <laughs> so they lost the contract. <laughs> Although Watford is very much a modern town, historians have recently unearthed evidence of a prehistoric tribe who became extinct around 3,000 years ago. But they weren't the last ancient people to die here. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. On my left, Barry Pryor and Graham Garden. And on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Andy Hamilton. And taking her place at the desk next to me to enjoy an evening of frantic scoring, please welcome the ever delightful Samantha. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, in this first round, we'll be providing misleading advice, and it's going to be well worth a listen. If you get the idea. <laughs> this week, the teams are providing unhelpful advice for travellers, by which we mean tourists rather than Romani travellers. And these days, we have to be careful not to stereotype Romani travellers in case they put a curse on us. <laughs> So, teams, your suggestions, please, of misleading travel advice for both this country and abroad. Andy, you can start. The campsite outside St Paul's Cathedral welcomes caravans. <laughs> Graham, after a night out in Bangkok, don't go home without your free ping pong ball. <laughs> Barry. English policemen are affectionately known as tit face. <laughs> Tim. When watching cricket in Pakistan, ask what the rules are today. <laughs> Women smoking outside buildings are prostitutes. <laughs> Don't miss the London Olympics. Tickets on sale at the gate. <laughs> Vegetarian steaks in France are called cheval. <laughs> the euro is no longer legal tender in Greece. They would rather you paid in hummus. <laughs> in Pamplona, get out in the street and join in the famous catching of the bulls. <laughs> Greet any companion in the gents with, Are you on your own, big boy? <laughs> At the beach in Rio, every day is twang a thong day. <laughs> the Muslim community in England can seem a little reserved, but they will soon open up if you do them a nice drawing of Mohammed. <laughs> that was Andy Hamilton. <laughs> with a joke given to him by Jack D. <laughs> In Norfolk, when your host introduces his wife and sister, be sure to compliment her. <laughs> Good, well, the teams are going to sing for us now in the round called One Song to the Tune of Another. Piano accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell. Listeners will be interested to learn that back in the 70s, Colin produced wings. Then Salmonella broke out and his barbecue chicken stall was shut down. <laughs> we'll start with you, Barry, if we may. Uh, I'd like you to sing the words of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer to the tune of Delilah. <laughs> Reindeer had a very shiny nose And if you ever saw him You would even say it close Oh, the other reindeer Used to laugh and call him names They never let poor Rudolph Join in it Santa came to say Rudolph with your nose So bright Won't you guide my sleigh tonight So bright Won't you guide my sleigh tonight Oh, Barry Cry singing with an oxygen mask on Marvellous <laughs> So, you now, Tim, I'd like you to sing the words of Fight for Your Right to Party by the Beastie Boys <laughs> to the tune of Danny Boy. You wake up late for school, man, you don't want to go. You ask your mom, please, but she still says no. 
You miss two classes and no homework but your teacher preaches class like you're some kind of jerk. <laughs> you're gonna fight for your right to party your pop. Caught you smoking and he said no way. <laughs> that hypocrite smokes two packs a day, man living. At home is such a drag Now your mum threw away your best Part of a man All right, it's your turn now, Andy I'd like you to sing the words of the Bob the Builder theme <laughs> To the tune of O Fortuna from Carmina Burana <laughs> the builder can we fix it Bob the builder yes we can Scoop Mark and Dizzy and Rolly too Lofty and Wendy join the crew Pilchard and Bird Travis and Spud playing together like good friends should Can we have this man thrown out and the man sh <laughs> shouting more? It's actually Jeremy Hardy, I think. <laughs> and finally, Graham, I'd like you to sing the words of Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone to the tune of the Birdie Song. <laughs> Ain't no sunshine when she's gone It's not warm when she's away Ain't no sunshine when she's gone and she's always gone too long Any time she goes away Wonder this time where she's gone Wonder if she's gone to stay Ain't no sunshine when she's gone And this house just ain't no home Any time she goes away And I know, I know, I know I know, I know, I know I know, I know I know, I know I know, I know I know To leave the young thing alone But ain't no sunshine when she's gone Only darkness every day Ain't no sunshine when she's gone And this house can't at home Anytime she goes away 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 That's enough of that Graham, well done, Watford. <laughs> I bet you have line dancing here, don't you? <laughs> the next game is called Word for Word, and it's a word game that uses words in a game. <laughs> One team should start by taking turns to exchange a random series of words which must be totally unconnected. So if the word African is followed by the word Zulu, then it means the middle's fallen out of your dictionary. If exigent was followed by schizothermia, bacifrous, echopraxia, plump and buttocks, then you've got through to Stephen Fry's answer phone. <laughs> so, Tim and Andy, you can start exchanging your random words while Barry and Graham, you should carefully monitor their words and challenge to take over play if you detect a connection. So off you go, Tim and Andy. Crumpet. Pelvis. <laughs> Plectrum. Spinach. Forceps. Plasma. Culinary. Behemoth. <laughs> Gerund. That was Graham's. Yeah, uh... that was my favourite kids' programme, Gerund the Behemoth. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> On the radio, was it? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. on a book token. <laughs> <laughs> What used to happen in Jerem the Behemoth then, uh, Graham? What was the tune? They yeah. played visual games on the radio. It was yeah. marvellous. What was the, yeah, what was the theme tune, Graham? Perhaps you could do it for us. I'm you remember. Jerem the Behemoth. <laughs> that was a very short intro tune. <laughs> and that's all he said. 
And he, he married a behemoth. <laughs> I'm beginning to believe it. <laughs> it's true. There was a behemoth true. ball one year. Yeah. Behe Moth Ball. Mm. Moth Ball. No, yeah, I know. It's, it's, I know. I it's know. okay, Barry. It's okay. I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. we, we got it. I'm a pioneer, really. <laughs> so, over to you, yes, you've, won, you've won the challenge, Graham. I'm sure you'd be thrilled to know. <laughs> I've forgotten the plot now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Timmers. <laughs> Hesitation. <laughs> Graham, it's over to you. No? Yes, please. That was my word. Oh. <laughs> then. Table. Ballistic. Artichoke. Conifer. However. Holistic. This. <laughs> that. Andy. Well, he threw it there. This and that. That yeah. was my favourite children's program. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember two little finger Hello. puppets? This yeah. and that. Hello, this. Hello, that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yes. Shall we sing a song now? Yes. This, this and that. that. This, this, this and that. This that. that and this. We oh, had a little cat. This and that. This, this and that. that. <laughs> we haven't done it justice, really. Yeah, I'm filling up just remembering <laughs> that show. Yeah. It's all very well for you to laugh. I'm actually sitting quite close to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a correct challenge, though. Uh, this and that. I can't allow that. So uh, we'll have. Uh, you can carry on, please, uh, Andy. Turbot. Molest. <laughs> <laughs> so you just keep your private life out of it. So. <laughs> um, sperm. <laughs> and your Sharaban. Barry. Sharabang Sperm, 60s rock group. <laughs> Got all their albums. They did a cabaret at the Behemoth Ball one year. <laughs> you remember that. them? Do you not remember them, Sharabang? I'm not that old, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, Barry remembers their biggest hit. <laughs> Sharabang. Sharabang. Sharabang, they need your sperm. Sharabang. Sharabang. Sharabang, it's the end of time. Sharabang. Sharabang. I want to be a behemoth. Well, there's been mass coverage of the intrusion into people's private lives this year, but even before phone hacking and email interception, there were still certain sleazy individuals going through people's dustbins in the middle of the night in a desperate attempt to get close to the rich and famous. We spoke to one who we'll call Alan. It's not his real name. His real name is Barry Cryer. <laughs> Alan has inspired this idea for a game called Who's Dustbin? Now, I'll present each team with a dustbin that's been taken from outside the home of a well-known person, and the opposing team should try to guess the owner's identity from what the rummaging team discover has been thrown away. OK, Barry and Graham, the first celebrity dustbin is for you to rummage through, and the identity of its mystery owner is now being displayed to our theatre audience. <laughs> And for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Right, off you go, Barry and Graham. Uh, let's have a look in here. Oh, what's look. that? Floppo uh, hair conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple of old golf clubs. Um, oh, a pair of monogrammed gloves. Yep. The initials R and L. Yes. <laughs> Four... Four bits of old wedding cake. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, a turkey. Well, a quite, quite a, a few, quite a few actually. turkeys, <laughs> yeah. What's that book? What's that book there? Acting for Dummies. Oh. <laughs> Still in its wrapper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and oh, look, a signed photo from this dusky beauty in Hollywood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sat on the back. Is that a message? Oh no, it's an invoice. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> yes. 
Is that our Prime Minister in the, in the fictional world? Yes. Uh, <laughs> must oh. be Hugh Grant. Really? Hugh Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, as a child actor, starred in this and that. Do you remember? I remember. <laughs> He was, he was the caterpillar, wasn't he? he? Was. Hello, caterpillar. Hello. Oh, God, please make it end. <laughs> OK, your turn now, Tim and Andy. The identity of your celebrity dustbin owner will now be displayed to the audience. Well, here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. <laughs> James Murdoch. James Murdoch. OK, start rummaging now, Tim oh, and Andy. A, what's this? Let's have a look. Oh, look, oh. What do you got? Look, uh, it's a diary, 2008 diary. Oh, yeah. And it says, important meeting with senior staff, though I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another entry, Tim. What's that say? Met with senior staff, yeah. asked to sign cheque yeah. for a quarter of a million pounds, didn't ask why, didn't want to appear nosy. <laughs> There's loads of, loads of phone numbers in the back of oh, here. Yeah, no yeah. names, they've been tipexed out. Yeah. Um, Is that your number, Tim? Yeah, and my PIN number. Oh, God. Well, it was, before I had to change it. Oh, I remember because of your affair with Elle McPherson. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Is, is she still stalking you? Look, just leave it alone for her sake. <laughs> oh, here's a book. Teach yourself to speak American, Cobber. Oh, yeah. Another book, look, on morality and ethics. <laughs> also still in its wrapper. <laughs> this is the only way is not ethics, is it? <laughs> the end. The end. <clears throat> Rolf Harris, obviously. <laughs> it's got to be James Murdoch. Yeah. yeah. The uh, next round's called The Cutting Room Floor and is specially designed to encourage fierce competition between the teams as only the funniest contributions will make it to the air. Barry and Graham, I want you to step up to the microphone in the style of Mock the Week and say some very funny things that you uh, shouldn't come out with at a funeral yeah. while Tim and Andy, I want you to come up with a hilarious piece of consumer advice in the style of you and yours. So make your efforts hysterically funny, remember, or else uh, they'll end up on the cutting room floor. Off you go. On to the next round. <laughs> well, in the next round, our theatre audience will be called upon to get involved in the game called Karaoke Koki. Uh, this achieves the almost impossible by combining the best bits of karaoke with the best bits of hokey koki to make the worst of both worlds. <laughs> in Karaoke Koki, the audience will be invited to hum a song. Uh, the first team to buzz in and identify the song will be the winners. If the team is wrong, the audience must start again from where they left off and so on. <laughs> until someone gets it right or I, I wander out to see if there's a passing bus I can throw myself under. <laughs> Whichever comes first. Musical assistance will be provided by Colin Sell. OK, audience, the title of your first song will now be relayed to you via the display screen. For listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. The James Bond theme. The James Bond theme. Please do. Start us off, please, Colin. I've no idea what it is. I just want it to stop. <laughs> Good. I think I've heard it at funerals a few times. I don't think you're close yet. Didn't, yeah, I must say, it did sound... It sounded like a lot of old men eating cake or something. <laughs> I think we meet, maybe you've got too many people humming. That's yeah. The answer. I think, should we just uh, try it one more time? Um, benefit cheats only this time. <laughs> On the count of three, off you go. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> it's 
surprised they can afford cake. <laughs> I, don't, I think we might have to do men only on the count of three. One, two, three. Andy. Well, I feel I'm descending into mental illness now. <laughs> Feeling, I have a feeling I detected the vaguest suggestion of melody in there, and I think it might be the theme tune from James Bond. Oh, I'm not there. <laughs> Very good. OK, well, yes. let's try another one. Here's oh. a further, <laughs> further song title for you, and uh, here's the mystery voice for listeners at home. Do they know it's Christmas? Do they know it's Christmas? Colin, uh, another intro, please. Another intro. <laughs> Andy. It's In the flight of the bumblebee. <laughs> You know when they get stuck in the double glazing? Yeah. It's like... I don't know what it was, but it seemed to be coming towards us. Which was... <laughs> I think maybe, uh, maybe, maybe women only on the count of three, please. One, two, three. It's an old musical song. You can't put Willy where Willy won't go. <laughs> Love it to hear it again. I thought I was very recognisable. Well, can we hear more of it? Yeah, but you know I what can't it believe is. I said well, that. <laughs> Not everyone has my musical ear. <laughs> if I have, give it back. <laughs> Women only again on the count of three, please. One, two, three. Give us your money. <laughs> so sorry. So you, you were doing it so well, I just I got in the jet. It was like Ed Balls watching the Antique Road show. <laughs> was that the clue? That was the clue. Vera Lynn will meet again. <laughs> Do they know it's Christmas? Yes, yeah, so it was. Yeah. 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 Well, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time to squeeze in a round of the electrician's songbook. Uh, Samantha has to nip home earlier. She's got a recurring problem with faulty wiring, and yet another electrician is coming round to check her fuses. Samantha says she blows three or four a week in the cupboard under the stairs. <laughs> So, teams, your suggestions, please, of song titles likely to appeal to an audience of electricians. Andy, you can start. Ding dong, the switch is dead. <laughs> Great song by Vince Cable. <laughs> <laughs> Album of greatest hits by Earth, Live and Neutral. <laughs> Wish me luck as you microwave me goodbye. <laughs> uh, I got. Ian Drury's classic, Flex and Plugs and Shots and Volts. <laughs> Talking a... about my generator. Uh, a Hard Day's Night, uh, plus parts, plus VAT equals 820. <laughs> You've got to fit a socket or two. <laughs> the sad song. Of the weight conscious, underqualified electrician. I'm a nine stone cowboy. <laughs> Hold it, flashbang, wallop. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the show. And what can I say? Well, with the best will in the world, I'd inherit everything. 
And with that, from the team, Samantha, myself, and our audience here in Watford, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor, and Andy Hamilton have been given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Maysmith. <laughs> Present I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello and welcome to I'm sorry I haven't a clue. You join us for a second visit to the town of Watford in Hertfordshire. In the 1650s, Abbots Langley was the home of Thomas Greenhill, a pioneer in the art of embalming, who became so skilled he was invited to embalm the seventh Duke of Norfolk. Greenhill plugged all the main orifices with saltpetre-soaked corks before filling the body with a mixture of methanol and linseed oil through a funnel hammered into the nose. The Duke said it was so painful he almost wished he was dead. <laughs> Casterbury Park was for centuries the seat of the Earls of Essex and in 1536 hosted a banquet for Henry VIII. A huge boar was slaughtered and cooked in the Grand Hall. Every part was eaten as a delicacy, including the ears, nose and tail, boiled and roasted whole, although not many people fancied the roasted whole. <laughs> During the Second World War, the de Havilland Aircraft Factory was based at Leavesden Aerodrome. Leavesden was the home of the Halifax bomber, the notorious building society saboteur. <laughs> the Emperor Haile Selassie sought asylum here. With Ethiopia defeated by Italy, Selassie arrived at Leavesden Airport, declaring himself to be His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, elect of God and begat of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Immigration were at first suspicious, <laughs> not believing anyone had been defeated by Italians. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. And on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Andy Hamilton. And our glamorous assistant, who's been the team's right hand for many years, please welcome the ever delightful Samantha. Oh. We start today with the round called the Uxbridge English Dictionary. Uh, the English language has many words which the uninformed mistakenly believe mean the same thing. A lot of people don't understand the different functions of a solicitor and a barrister. Well, a solicitor is a lawyer holding a qualification that allows him or her to give legal advice, draw up documents and do preparatory work for advocacy cases in the higher law courts. Whereas a barrister is what you hang on to on the stairs. <laughs> However, meanings are constantly changing, so teams, let's hear any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Andy, you can start. Bin man. Someone who is now a woman. <laughs> Graham? Pitter patter. Someone who slaps Greek bread. <laughs> Barry? Expensive. No longer thoughtful. Tim. Chutney. No man's land between Chiswick and Putney. <laughs> Trampoline. Liquid for cleaning vagrants. <laughs> Triangular. 
to test Mrs Merkel's patience. <laughs> Cockney. Bizarre physical feature. <laughs> Ramshackle. A sex game condemned by the RSPCA. <laughs> Char lady, Joan of Arc. <laughs> Detonation, Greece. <laughs> Bombardier, an overly aggressive form of culling. <laughs> Zippity doo dah, your flies are undone. <laughs> Bumpkin. Serviette used in the lavatory. <laughs> Epilogue. A cheerful piece of wood. <laughs> Alfalfa. A dominant male with a stammer. Teams are going to sing along with some well-known discs now in the round called Pick Up Song. <laughs> Samantha made her usual visit to the record library earlier where the archivists were discussing her current appearance on Come Dine With Me. They decided the first three meals weren't up to much, all New World offerings. There was a mediocre Mexican dish, an unappetizing Chilean speciality, and a strange recipe from Peru. But they're hoping for great things when they get to see Samantha's Brazilian spread. Samantha is back with us and ready to give the discs a spin. You should sing along, teams, and continue when Samantha turns the volume down. If, when the music returns, you're within a gnat's crotchet of the original, I'll be awarding points, and points mean prizes. What do idiots shout? Prizes! <laughs> well, this week's prize will delight any wildlife enthusiast who likes to keep predatory nocturnal birds warm these cold winter nights. It's this stylish heated owl rail. <laughs> Barry, you're to start, oh. and I'd like you to accompany Pat Boone singing Speedy Gonzales. La 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 you better come home, Speedy Gonzales, away from Tannery Road. Stop all of your drinking, or oh, where that floozy name flow. Come on home to your adobe, and slap some mud on the wall. The roof is leaking like a strainer. There's all the roaches in the hall, la 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 la. Speedy Gonzales, why don't you come home? <laughs> Speedy Gonzales, how come you leave me all alone? Hey, Rosita, I have to go shopping downtown for my mother. <laughs> she needs some tortillas and chili pa Okay, so you're next, Tim. I'd like you to accompany Shirley Temple singing Animal Crackers in My Soup. Animal Crackers in My Soup Monkeys and Rabbits loop the loop Gosh, oh gee, but I have fun Swallowing animals one by one In every bowl of soup I see Lions and tigers watching me I make them jump right out to a hoop Those animal crackers in my soup. When I get hold of the big bad wolf, I just push him down to drown. Then I bite him a million bits and I gobble and him, I right him right down. down. Thank you, Tim. It's like a vision of things to come, wasn't it? <laughs> Well, it's uh, your turn now, Graham. Would you accompany Bob Dylan singing oh. Here Comes Santa Claus? <laughs> Here 
Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Fixin' and blitzin' and all his reindeer pulling on the reins. Bells are ringing, children singing, all is merry and bright. Hang your stockings, say your prayers, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He's got a bag that's filled with toys for boys and girls again. <laughs> Hear those sleigh bells jingle jangle, what a beautiful sight. Jump in bed, cover up your head, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. <laughs> Here you come, Santa Claus. Down Santa Claus Lane. He doesn't care. Uh, finally, Andy, can you please accompany Boney M singing Hooray, Hooray, It's a Holly Holiday? Heidi, Heidi, ho, diggy dee dee doo, diggy dee dee doo, Heidi, Heidi, ho, diggy dee dee doo, diggy dee dee doo, Heidi, Heidi, ho, diggy dee dee doo, diggy dee dee doo, Heidi, Heidi, ho, there's a place I know where we should go. Heidi, Heidi, ho, won't you take me there, your lady fair? Heidi, Heidi, ho, there's a brook nearby, the grass goes high. Heidi, Heidi, ho, where we both can hide side by side. Heidi, Heidi, ho, hooray, hooray, it's a holly, holly day. What a world of fun for everyone. Can I just say, I took it at the speed there that Boney M should have taken it at. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's noted. Andy Hamilton there, thank you very much, evoking the spirit of the Blitz here in Watford. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't have enjoyed that more if I tried. <laughs> well, the teams are going to do a spot of acting for us now in the round called Sound Charades. This is based on the old TV favourite, Give Us a Clue. The Give Us a Clue Mime Master's Mime Master was, of course, Lionel Blair. <laughs> Lionel was always good to his team, often taking them on corporate jollies. Christopher Biggins and Melvin Hayes recall being on the Grouse Moors, having seen no birds all day, when suddenly Lionel jumped up and shot a load right over their heads. <laughs> Tim and Andy, you're to start, please. And uh, your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. So, for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. Off you go, Tim and Andy. Two words, and it's a television programme. Hmm. It goes like this. Oh, hello, Lady Abigail, how are you? What can I get you today? Um, I'd like um, some swan, if you've got any. <laughs> You don't mind if I call you Abby? No, you? not at all, no, yeah. no. Exactly how much swan meat do you want? I don't actually want any meat. Well, you want, you want the feathers? That's right. Only the tiny, special, soft ones, if you know what I mean. Oh, I get you. And how much do you want of that? Are you 100 weight? I'd like 20 hundred weight. <laughs> all right, Abby, I'll, I'll put it on your bill. Goodbye. A ton of feathers. Yes. Uh, you know this, you, for goodness you, yeah, sake. Yeah. Put, no, I'm just checking that you did. <laughs> it's <laughs> down ton Abby. Abby. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's your turn, Baron Graham. Your title is now being exhibited on the laser display board. <laughs> Once again, here's the mystery voice for listeners at home. This is Spinal Tap. This is Spinal Tap. Four words. Four. Oh, and it's oh, yes. the film. Film. Here we go. Do a deer, a female deer. Hamish. Do go. <laughs> You'll have had your tea. Uh, no, but I heard you singing, so I hurried around to put a stop to it. 
Well, I just can't help it, thanks to my new lodgers, the famous Tap family singers. Oh, the Taps. <laughs> I've heard them. They leave me hot and cold. <laughs> Oh, they're not just a bunch of drips, you can. <laughs> Still writing your own material, are you? <laughs> Here come the tap children now. Now, this is little abdominal. Oh, hello. <laughs> this bonny lass is cranial. How do you do, cranial? And this is young pectoral. Pectoral, charmed. And, uh, oh, who is this wee fellow? Uh, oh, you must have heard of him. <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, I was that's... going to say the sound of mucus, but I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Von Tapp family. I think this has to be this fourth child. Got spondylosis. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. This is Spinal Tap. Yeah! yeah. Right, uh, final titles now being displayed for you. This is for you, Barry and Graham, and here once more is the uh, mystery voice for listeners at home. Brief Encounter. Brief Encounter. That's a film. Two words. Two words, film. Film. And it goes like this. <clears throat> Dougal! Himish, you'll, uh, <laughs> you'll have had your tea. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say no to a Lapsang Su Chong. <laughs> oh, but wished, wished, man, wished. There's a briefen. Oh, there's two briefens, three briefens. And look over there, that's four briefens, five. <laughs> well, I wonder what that could possibly be. <laughs> Brief encounter. Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, the next round is about things people have said in interviews. Barry's been interviewed several times, but he complained these people are so unoriginal, they all come out with the same old tired things. Yada, 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 Mr. Cry, yada, yada, yada. It may harm your defence, yada, yada. <laughs> Something which you later rely on in court. What people say in public is one thing, but it's really quite revealing what they'll say when they think no one's listening. Nigel Reese says, hello and welcome to Quote Unquote. <laughs> now, the teams are now going to play their version of Quote Unquote, and we'll hear some recorded quotations which have been cut short. The team's task is to complete them. So the first one is for you, Barry, and it's Anne Widdicombe. A lot of people still believe it happened in childbirth, uh, but what actually happened was, very, very briefly... I arrived from Mars. <laughs> and uh, here's Anne Widdicombe again for you, Andy. I went at exactly the right time. If I had gone earlier, I would have regretted going. I went at exactly the right time. Uh, I didn't want to go earlier. I still had... Uh, My pants on. <laughs> Uh, Tim, here's some Ed Balls. Believe me, if you have a surname like mine... You don't want to be christened Total. <laughs> uh, Graham, now it's Boris Johnson for you. I think I've successfully ridden two horses for quite a long time, but I have to admit there have been moments when... One horse found out about the other. Andy, this is Cliff Richard. There's no way you can mess around with something like your vocal cords. You have to be careful. And I must admit, now I feel I'm almost too precious with it because I'm so terrified that something's going to happen and I'm not going to be able to sing. And then we've got thousands of people that are going to be dancing in the streets. <laughs> All right, Tim, this one's for you. This is Lady Gaga. To me, it was performance art and it was daring and strong and sexual and political and female, but to my mother it was Coronation Street. <laughs> OK. Uh, Graham, this is Jim Davidson. I think all PC does is fuel the bigots. You ram it down someone's throat, you can't say that, you've got to do that. And some dumbo will say I think all PC does is fuel the bigots. <laughs> Here is some for any of you to have a go at. Uh, this one is Michael Winner. 
It's a great question to ask people. I've asked Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown. On the scale of one to ten, how much do you want to punch me? <laughs> this is Nick Clegg. You know, I was constantly reading the papers that Gordon Brown and David Cameron had all these consultants over from America. You know, we were doing this on a shoestring. I mean, I had David Laws was pretending to be David Cameron and Chris Hume was pretending to be not driving his car. Allegedly. Here's some more Nick Clegg. Yeah, I mean, a bit of a, a, bit of a sort of mongrel family. My mum's Dutch, my dad's half Russian, and I've now compounded that by... Um... Blacking up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's... Here's, um... <laughs> here's the Archbishop of Canterbury. I did my doctoral research at Oxford on Russian Christianity, having for a long time had a fascination with... Impersonating a tramp peeping through a hedge. (laughs) And And, uh, finally, it's Bob Geldof. Where we can intervene and save thousands of people from a lunatic, and we have the means to do it, then I believe it's right to... Kill Simon Cowell. (laughs) Well, the next round is about conversations, a bit like the one I had with my agent yesterday, which ended, you have to do it, you're contracted. (laughs) As it's a musical round, the teams will be accompanied at the piano by Colin Sell. Everyone, (laughs) yeah... Well, that's thrown us. He's never had a round of applause before, so it's... Um... <laughs> Everyone who's used him say they can always rely on Colin to find the right key. And you can always get shoes rehealed while you're in there as well, so... <laughs> the teams will sing a song in the style of a conversation. And the song I'd like you to utilise in your musical conversation is Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, hi. Come in. Your father and I are just watching The Only Way is Essex. Is this the real life? Well, it's sort of real life. Is this just fantasy? Not really. It's just real people from Essex put into dramatic situations. Caught in a landslide. Oh, if only. <laughs> no, it's a kind of reality show. No escape from reality. Indeed. Now, have you bought me that birthday present? Open so- your eyes. <laughs> I haven't closed them yet. Look up to the skies and see. Oh, what? Is that a balloon? I'm just a poor boy. Well, I wasn't expecting you to break the bank, dear. I know you've been finding it hard of late. I need no sympathy. I know, of course not, dear. Your father and I just can't understand why you'd need to sell your body. (laughs) Because I'm... Easy come, easy go. Yes, dear. Now, how are you getting on with the drugs? <laughs> A little high, little low. Well, I'm sorry to hear it. Oh, was that you, dear? Anyway, the wind blows. Doesn't really matter to me. Well, I'll open a window all the same, so... How was the paintballing? Mama. Yes, yes, dear. Just killed a man. Good heavens, I didn't think it was possible, paintballing. Put a gun against his head. Well, that was asking for trouble. (laughs) Pulled my trigger, now he's dead. You know, this isn't the best birthday news. Mama. Yes? Life had just begun. Oh, don't be ridiculous, dear. You're a 57-year-old man with one of the finest collections of carry-on films in the country. (laughs) But now I've got to throw it all away. Well, no, you really have upset me. Mama. Sorry, Andy. Not even your Kenneth Williams impression can cheer me up.
It is quite funny, though. <laughs> To make you cry. Oh, bless you, dear. Now you run along. See you the same time tomorrow. If I'm not back again this time tomorrow. Don't let me down, dear. We're trying to remember the name of that Carry On film starring Cardew the Cad Robinson. Carry On? Yes. Carry On. <laughs> As if nothing really matters. Really? I felt sure it was carrying on up the Kyber. <laughs> It's very nearly the end of the show, but uh, there is just time to fit in a round of Pensioners Film Club. As a nation, we face the problem of a shortfall in the pension fund, with the result that many of us are going to have to retire later. Tim Brooke Taylor made a sad discovery when he realised he needed another three years' work. Tim rang his agent, only to find out he had been dead since 1972. (laughs) OK, teams, your suggestions, please, of movie titles likely to appeal to an audience of pensioners. You can start this one. Andy. The 39 Ramps. <laughs> uh, Barry. Deaf in Venice. Deaf in Venice! <laughs> Tim. Four funerals and another funeral. <laughs> Graham. Who dares win yet? <laughs> Bob and Carol and Ted and Thingy. (laughs) The Bridges of Madison County. The Bridges. Betty and Barry Bridges. Move to Madison County. I'm Spartacus. No, you're not. (laughs) The Guns of Navarone. The Guns. Viv and Norman Gunn. You do do remember them. The Matron Reloaded. (laughs) Mash, my lunch for me, please. (laughs) The Hunt for Red Octogenarian. (laughs) The Wizened of Oz. Bring me the head of... What's his name? (laughs) Oh, yeah. In making this show, there's an important but unsung army of assistants and technicians who rarely get any credit. As it's the end of the series, the teams decided it would be a sad oversight not to thank them all personally. And they were right, it was. (laughs) So from the team, Samantha, myself and our audience here in Watford, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Andy Hamilton were being given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>